This is um, my homemade microscope setup. Um, this is my sample chamber that fits onto this rail and slides up between the objective and condenser lens of the microscope. So this is the light source that, that is gathered or collected by this microscope objective and focused into the trapping plane, which is also the imaging plane. Um, the objective lens sends that light down to the camera. Uh, the laser, the trapping laser comes in from this direction, is coupled in with a dichroic here, and is focused into the sample and acts as the trapping laser. So. This is an oil immersion objective lens, so I have to put some oil in between the first cover slip and the objective. And my sample plane, or my sample holder is connected to this stage, which moves it in three dimensions. So once I get it fixed, you can see there's beads floating around in the sample. So now I need to align my laser. it's still aligned from <laughs> about a week ago. So I can um, move my sample plane around until I can find a bead that's at the right location for trapping. Let's see if I can find one. I actually have my stage on these. Yeah, I can use if you look here, you can see the back reflection moving because I have the trap set up so that a steering mirror is at the same location as the focal plane. And I can move the trap without affecting too much um, any aberrations. So if I can just trap a bead, maybe I'll have it too powerful. Now we have it trapped. So if I put the this filter in front of the camera, it cuts off light with longer wavelengths than about 1050. So I can block the trap and I can move the trap around in the focal plane with my motorized controls. And I can move it in the axial direction, but you can't really tell. Um, so, this allows us to manipulate objects, but we can also collect the forward scattered laser light onto a position sensing detector and um, watch its motion in X, the X and Y direction. So, the forward scattered laser light is collected and projected onto this position sensing diode. And the voltages that we read from the position sensing diode give us, um, there's two voltages, uh, one proportional to the position in the X direction and one proportional to the position in the Y direction. Um, and so we track these two signals in time, that's the red and white line here, and we actually watch the Y and X at, um, signals on one plot so that we can see what the actual signal looks like in real time. And at the same time we plot a, a power spectrum for each dimension uh, below so that we can watch uh, how strongly the particles are trapped um, while we're taking data. This is a 10.9 micron polystyrene sphere. And um, that's really the best one to use because it's big enough to, uh, to resolve with visible light. Um, I'll also show you uh, the signal that we look at from the gold nano shells, which are the tiny silica beads coated with gold. Uh, but they are smaller, they're about 100 nanometers in diameter, so they're too small to see with the visible light. But we can look at the backscattered light on the camera, which I'll show you in a little while. Here. 
So the way to do it is to align the laser onto the position sensing diode and then trap a bead and realign the signal for a nice circular uh, signal in the XY plane. So now we have one trapped. So you can see the signal changed from something pretty smooth to like a jagged line. See, um, this is a frequency spectrum of the location and time of the um, trapped bead. And what we measure is this characteristic, what we call corner frequency of the power spectrum. Um, we fit a Lorentzian to that spectrum and determine the corner frequency. And this gives us a what we call a trap stiffness. It's something to characterize, like characterize the force um, of the trap. Um, for cancer therapy, that was one of the first applications. Um, they were introduced into tumors in mice, and um, they were tuned to absorb uh, at wavelengths, which is minimally invasive to um, flesh, which is basically the water window. Um, so these nanoshells were attached to these tumors. The light close, and some light close to the resonance was irradiated onto the, that region of the um, flesh. The nanoshells heated, um, killed the tumors, and the tumors did not return. Um, what we use them for is to trap them near resonance. Um, normally, optical trapping is done very far from resonance, like with the bead that I just showed you. That has a resonance around in the UV but these nanoshells resonate in the near IR. Um, and this is uh, useful because we have a TISAF laser which can be tuned to um, any wavelength between about 750 and 850 nanometers. So uh, what we can do with that is trap, tune the laser, trapping wavelength um, to be somewhat near the resonance of the nanoshells, or the single nanoshell being trapped. And we can track its position in time with our position, position sensing diode, find that characteristic frequency, and see how that changes um, as we are further or closer to resonance. So I will try to demonstrate trapping an inner shell here. see a lot here on the screen. Um, every now and then you can see these tiny particles, but they're actually um, not resolvable by the light wavelengths we're using for the visible. So what, the way we, I'm not even sure if I have a lot of mana shells in the sample, but the way we see them is look at the backscattered light as they pass through the trap. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure if you can see the uh, reflections there, but you can see something moving uh, in the center. That's actually the, a trap nano shell reflecting light back towards the camera. So the laser light's coming in this direction and coming back to the camera here. We can see that um, the signal is much lower, but there is still a corner frequency in the power spectrum. It's not quite aligned, but the effect is there. So that's pretty much. I need a titanium sapphire laser because I need a, a laser that will give me 
the option of tunability. Um, right now I'm working on an experiment where I want to trap as a function of wavelength. So uh, it's basically necessary to, um, to have a tunable laser for that. And as far as I know, a TISAF um, will give me the most tunability um, that I can get.